One of the biggest selling points of ClickUp, for me at least, is the everything view. This view gives you access to absolutely everything that is within your ClickUp system, but it's all in one place. When you combine this with all of the different views available, with all of the different filters, grouping, sorting options that you can have in ClickUp, what you have is incredibly powerful. So let's dive into ClickUp and have a look at some of the different ways you can harness the everything view. Suppose you're new to ClickUp, you've not got a lot of stuff in there. This is my demo workspace, so that's exactly how this is at the moment. This is your home screen, and if you click here, on everything, it will take you to the everything view. Now, by default, this shows all of your lists. Everything is grouped by list and it's also grouped by status. So you can just see I've created some basic tasks in there. You can change that really easily. So you can see here it's grouped by status and you can turn off also grouped by list. You just have a straight list of all of the different tasks across the whole of your ClickUp workspace. Now where this starts to get really powerful is when you bring in some of the key filter options. One of the most important ones uh, is actually location or list. So you might wanna think, I'm creating a view that brings in all of the stuff that was in within ClickUp, but actually I wanna only include things from certain lists or I wanna filter out other lists. For example, if you use ClickUp to track the books that you're reading or to track your finances maybe, I've seen that done before, or to track your exercise and workouts, but you want a list that shows you your tasks, then other things that aren't tasks like books or exercise, you want to filter that out. So you just choose uh, whichever lists you want to filter out. Let's just filter out that one. I don't know if there's anything in there. The next thing is date-based filters. So let's say, for example, that this one is due today and you wanna create a filter that only shows you tasks that are due today. You can nest the filters within groups or you can also add a separate filter and let's just say the due date is today. I've got all of these different options, today, yesterday, and so on. It goes through the whole of ClickUp and only brings in the tasks that are due today. Really useful. If you're collaborating with people, you might want to filter out tasks that are assigned to other people and only select tasks that are assigned to you specifically. And then the last one, which is perhaps the most powerful, is filtering by custom fields. Before that though, there are other things you can do. If you're using multiple different statuses or status types, you can filter by that. If you use tags, you can filter priority. All of these different things can filter by. Now, being able to filter by custom fields means that the everything views that you can create can be as complicated or as simple as you want them to be and as powerful as the many different custom fields that you have. But because of the ability to create these views that incorporate everything in your ClickUp system, the custom fields you use are actually really important. It's one of the things that I like about ClickUp over and above something like, say, Notion. In Notion, you might have databases for different things, but those databases are separate. You can link them with relations and rollups, but they're still separate things. Whereas in ClickUp, if you have the same custom field in two separate lists, then you can bring everything from those lists, no matter how they're related or not related, into one view. And so the other main thing that you want to think about with your everything views is how you group them and how you sort them. Depending on what your view is and what it's going to be used for, then the way you group things and the way you sort things will show that information for you in very, very, very different ways. For example, if you're bringing in a filtered view of all tasks that are due this week, you can group them by date. So those tasks will be grouped by whichever date they're due on. You could group them by priority. So you could group them, as we've seen already, by their list or their location. You can group them by a custom field. And this is what I do most often. And I'll show you that in just a second. And you can also sort them by anything. Say, for example, it's a weekly view. You group it by due date. But then within those groups, you want to sort it by priority. That's an important thing to think through for your everything views. 
So here is a very basic everything filtered everything view that I've got set up. Currently it is grouped by this custom field which I call focus. So I have my main objectives, tasks for the morning, tasks for the afternoon and then tasks for the evening. But I can customize the grouping and change that from being grouped by focus to let's say I'll group it by priority instead. And now you see that it's exactly the same tasks but they're grouped differently. Currently they're sorted by priority, so grouping them by priority and sorting them by priority doesn't make an awful lot of sense. Let's change the grouping back to that custom field of focus. And now, just for the sake of example, I'll sort them alphabetically. Now what this does is that adds that to the sort list, so it's still priority and then alphabetically, but if I can click here, I can change the order of that, so it's now sorting them alphabetically and then by priority. So think through the way you group your tasks and the way you sort your tasks in your everything views. The last thing, what columns do you want to see? You can add in all of these different, they're like properties of your tasks. This is basically what you need to think through to determine what information you actually see in your everything view. In everything views, your view options become quite important as well because they control the different things that you might be able to see or not see. So let's just click customize up here and go for the list options. Wrap text might be useful. This task has a really long title and I want to be able to see it all but I can't without making my name column so big can't see anything else. Wrapping the text would just mean that the name column shows in full no matter how long it is. You can pin the description of the view, which basically means if you need some kind of a description so that everyone knows what it's for and what it does, you can pin that there. See task locations, that's really helpful in an everything view. It, it can leave it feeling a bit cluttered, so I tend not to use it that much. But if you put it on, what you'll end up with is a little breadcrumb of showing you where the task is sitting within ClickUp subtask parent names becomes relevant. In order for this to work, you need to have this little option here showing subtasks as separate tasks. It will then filter the subtasks separately from the parent task, meaning that my subtask is showing up and it also shows me what the parent task is called. That can be useful if you have a lot of subtasks. Your everything views have access to all of the same different kinds of view that your lists do. So you can have board views, calendar views, timeline views, list views, table views, all of that. And you can create some pretty powerful things. So how do I use the everything views that I have in ClickUp? Well, what I do is I create specific filtered and grouped views for defined purposes within my workflow. These are actually the main views in my ClickUp system. These are where I spend most of my time, most of my day, and I will go to them at different points depending on what I need in any specific moment. One of the things that you'll spot is that you really need to be clear on what is the purpose of your view before you design and create it you'll see that some of the views that I have are specifically created for planning what I'm gonna do when, and others of them are specifically created for me to actually use them as a reference point for getting things done and executing on those plans through the day. You need to understand what your view is for to understand how to group it, how to sort it, how to filter it, and what information you want it to show you and also what type of view to use. The first view that I have is my overdue view. So you can see it up here. This is very simply anything that is overdue. I use this to just check what I've missed and then work out if I need to reschedule it or complete it. The next up, so I'm kind of gonna work through them. In a sense, it feels like I'm gonna work through them backwards, but it'll give you an idea about my workflow with these different views as well. I use a system or a version of Carpaline's Time Sector system and one of my views is the Time Sector view. I'm actually going to hide what's in here for confidentiality but you can see I've got it grouped by a custom field which is Time Sector and I have two filters um, 
I tend to filter out my project tasks at the moment and I will explain why I do that in a future video but not today and uh, I have 11 locations set that are not task related and therefore they don't come into this list so I filter those out as well but what this enables me to do is to see all of the different tasks I have the time sector that they relate to and then in my monthly planning and in my weekly planning I will move things through the different time sectors once I've done that I will then move on to my this week view again I'm gonna hide everything in here now what this is is it follows similar filters so it is not things in those locations and where the time sector is set to this week or the due date is set to this week and I have it grouped by day so I can see what I've got planned for each day of the week and what I will do here is normally when I start this process of the planning they'll all be in in a separate filter which is empty because they've not got a due date and I will go through that list of tasks without a due date I'll compare it with my calendar and see what time I've got and I will allocate tasks to specific days now on a specific day the main place where I'll spend most of my time is this one today's focus and as you can see this is a list view it's grouped by the, what I call focus so I've got my objectives tasks for the morning evening this is where I spend most of my day because this is where the key tasks for the day are at some points of the day maybe when I'm checking and planning and and then later in the day I will move from today's focus to do today now this is just a straight list that includes everything I need to do today from any of my different lists or areas and it will include all of those less urgent less important tasks that I've filtered out of my focus list for the day the reason why I have two separate views for my daily tasks is very simple some of the tasks on my daily list will be things that I can only do in the evening uh, they're end of day close down tasks or they're things that I can only do at home when I'm not at work or they're things that are just less important but still I want to do so I have two lists one for the things that are important and that I need to focus on and one for everything that needs to be done that day and I also have a smattering of other views that I've created for different purposes that I use a lot less frequently here are some of the key ones of those so I have a reschedule board this is very simple something that I created to make it easy to reschedule tasks between days I currently have it grouped across the top by day and say for example actually I'm gonna do this one tomorrow so I just use this for rescheduling tasks and then lastly I have a view of tasks completed today sometimes I use that just to see what I've done and then all tasks is literally just everything sometimes it helps to see everything in one place in one list so that's the everything view in ClickUp really powerful really useful really helpful if you've liked this video and found it valuable then please do hit that like button down below please do share this with anyone else who might be interested check out these videos that are on your screen now for other videos about ClickUp and please do join us on the next video there's lots more to come thank you very much for watching